With a little lateral thinking, and by putting the television on its side, we can create a 64 column sideways text mode on the VIC-20. This video will show how it's done. I've previously shown a 40 column text mode in BASIC, but that's been around for decades. However, I've never seen anyone use this trick to get 64 columns before, so hopefully something new. Before continuing, I should probably make a disclaimer. Putting a television on its side may not be safe, and we take no responsibility for any damage or accidents caused by trying this. The television will probably be unstable on its side, and the components inside are not designed to function in this way. Normally, high-res graphics are achieved on the VIC by putting a different character in each screen location from left to right, top to bottom. Therefore, the first screen location has character 0, the at character, the next character 1, the A character, and we can then alter pixels just by redefining those characters in the character definition map in memory that contain those pixels. However, because we're using the screen sideways, we're going to lay out the screen map so that character 0 is at the top right of the screen if viewed in its normal orientation, and then the character 1 below it, and this continues down each row and to the left for each column. If viewed sideways, then this would look just the same as is normally used. On the VIC, each character can be defined using a series of 8 or 16 bytes, depending on if we're using 8x8 or 8x16 characters. For this text mode, we're going to use 8x16 characters, and we're going to use 4-bit-wide simulated characters. And therefore, in those 16 bits down, if we're going to put our characters sideways, then we can get 4 4-bit four characters in each character definition. And if we look at this example here, we can see that we've got the letters C-O-M-M -M for Commodore. That's how it would look in the character map. So the screen map would just have character 0 representing those four characters, and then, or at least the location where those four characters are going to be stored. And then the character definition for that C-O-M-M, -M, those four 4-bit four wide characters, would occupy memory in the way shown on the screen. The character definition map will start at hex 1000, and then each byte as we go down will represent another pixel column, if viewed sideways, of the characters that we want to define, that we want to display. The VIC allows us to alter the screen dimensions, and on a PAL screen we can get a maximum of about 27 columns by 33 rows in the normal text orientation, if we were using 4-bit wide characters, and hence putting two simulated characters per one 8-bit wide character definition, then this would allow uh, 27 times 2 equals 54 columns of text, uh, although this may be hard to fit on some television sets. If instead, though, we were to look at the 33 columns of text sideways on the screen, then this would allow 33 times 2 equals 66 columns if you'd using 4-bit wide fonts on their side. The reason we configure the VIC to use 8x16 character definitions is because we had to map the whole screen using the 256 characters available. If we were to use 8x8 character definitions and use 33 rows, then that would only allow 256 divided by 33 rows equals 7 columns, or displayed sideways and using a 4-bit font, that would give us 66 columns but only 7 rows. However, if we use an 8x16 character definition, then we can fit four sideways characters, so four times four bit characters into each 8x16 character definition, and therefore we can reduce our number of real rows displayed to 16, and then that allows us to display more columns. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using uh, 64 columns simulated by 14 simulated rows. The reason we're using 14 simulated rows, or 14 real columns, whichever way you want to look at it, is that each real character definition is 16 bytes. And therefore, for 16 real rows, it would take 16 bytes times 16 real rows equals 250 bytes to define one real column, or one simulated row. If we've got 14 simulated rows, or 14 real columns, then that would be 14 times the 256 equals 3584 bytes, uh, which would be um, E00 hex in the character definition map. The VIC can only address memory from uh, well, up to 2000 hex, and therefore if we locate the character map at the lowest realistic address at 1000 hex, then it will occupy memory from 1000 to 1DFF, and therefore the highest location that we can give for the screen map 
is at 1E00. So the character map just fits before the screen map. And then the screen map itself only needs 16 real rows by 14 real columns, and therefore only uses uh, 16 times 14 equals 224 bytes, uh, which is uh, E0 hex. So that would mean we can uh, put the screen map to occupy between location 1E00 and uh, 1EDF. So the code could go after that at uh, 1EE0. I think it might be possible to extend this to a 16 by 15 text mode by overlapping the screen map and character map, but I haven't experimented with this yet. If I manage it, I'll publish the details at a later date. This all works well on a PAL display, but because NTSC has less screen real estate, 64 columns sideways isn't really possible. However, people in NTS land I haven't forgotten you. Uh, this also supports text modes 56 by 14 and 52 by 16. It might even be possible to do 56 by 16, but there seems to be a problem with the scrolling on this uh, on this demo. But that might be possible as well if I um, or anybody else fancies uh, sorting out the bugs in that. Uh, so uh, that should give a considerable boost, even if it isn't quite the uh, 64 by 14 uh, that that, uh, that we've been able to do in PAL. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this text mode. I love 64 column displays, such as on the TRS-80, the Exidy Sorcerer, the Soul 20. I particularly like 64 by 16 displays. It's a bit of a shame I couldn't easily stretch the VIC to do 64 by 16, but I've got an idea about how to do this in the future, although it may make the screen update a bit slow. This text mode is naturally a trade-off. What we gain in simulated columns, we lose in rows, and that's without even mentioning the fact that the text is being printed sideways. I've put some example code into a GitHub repo if you want to give this a go, and I'd love to hear what you think about it all and whether you think the trade-off is worth it. Uh, the GitHub repo is linked in the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website. So uh, do have a look at that. Uh, have a look at some of our other videos. And is this as a new text mode? It would be fantastic if you could let people know about this video.